Welcome back to Jeeps and Things. I finally did it. Settled on a winch. So for the Gladiator, I went with the Apex Badland winch, 12,000 pound with the steel cable. In this video, I'm going to show you what all comes in the box. Let's check it out. So right off the bat, you have your guide to winching, install instructions, and all important stickers. I know exactly where I'm gonna put that. Perfect. After that, you have your apex specific hook, the hook strap. Got your magnetic wireless remote. Everything is very well packaged, very well taken care of. This is your control box relocation bracket. Your control wires, if you choose to do it wired instead of a remote. In this little white box, we also get our battery cutoff switch. And then lastly on the top here, we also get a terminal box. Taking off the styrofoam, that exposes the actual winch itself. But before we get into that, because it's very heavy, we have some electrical connections and bolts, some more mounting hardware for the winch itself. Oh, because mine has the steel rope, I have the roller fair lead. And then that just leaves us with the winch itself. This is very heavy. Make sure to lift with your legs. So I ended up going with the Harbor Freight Badlands winch because a lot of the channels I watch, like Matt's Off-Road Recovery, Cascade Towing and Recovery, and Fabrats, all use the Harbor Freight Badlands Apex winches. So if all those guys are using these winches all the time, and if you watch any of those channels, you see how much they use them, these things can't be bad. The only thing I did differently is I went with the steel cable because it's cheaper than the synthetic rope, but I fully intend to add a synthetic rope later on. So here's another reason why I love this ARB bumper. It comes with a built-in recessed winch plate. This is actually doubled up steel. I don't know if you can see the seam right there between the two plates. So it's definitely gonna handle the load. And it came with this fancy little bracket to hold a license plate over the fair lead. If anybody knows what that symbol is, leave it in the comments. I'm sure a lot of people will. So, because I'm using the roller fair lead, I have to replace this bracket with the roller fair lead one. This is for the synthetic rope fair lead. So, we'll start there. Forgive the lawnmower in the background. I'm also gonna take off my lights so I can add the winch in a lot easier. My whole goal is to not have to disconnect the bumper because that's a lot of work and it's a bit of wiring too. If you remember in my light video, these wires run under the winch mounting plate here. So I'm not actually gonna take the lights all the way out just because it's gonna be so much more work. So we're gonna leave them like that. So there's a bit more prep work you have to do before you mount the winch onto the bumper. Since I'm not relocating my control box, I need to locate this little black wire here and mount it onto that post. Make sure that the wire itself is out of the way of the cable because you don't want that to get caught up. You also need to locate your ground cable because that's gonna go on that post too. The more work you can do off the vehicle, the better, because everything on the back here is gonna be a very tight fit, this ARB bumper.
so in the Badlands winch, there is no threaded spot for a nut to go or for the bolt to go into. What you do is you actually take these square nuts and you put them inside that hole. I can't do that while holding the camera, so let me set this down and I'll do that. So this bumper is full of ventilation holes, and the cool part is they're all cut exactly where your bolts need to go in to the winch. So if anybody tells you you can't mount a, a, a winch into the ARB bumper with it installed, they're wrong. But it would probably make it a whole lot easier. I think I'm actually going to get some longer hardware. Because the winch plate in the bumper is double plated, uh, it means there's not quite as much room for the threads to catch on. And I'm not using the lock washers that came with the kit. So... I think I'm going to get some longer bolts tomorrow. All right, winch is hard mounted to the bumper. I already re reinstalled the lights. Now we just have to do a bit of wire management, get it all wired up, and we'll check to make sure it works. All right, it is the next day. I apologize, this is not a two day project, but it got a little bit too dark last night and I don't mind doing wiring in the dark, but you guys wouldn't be able to see it. So what I did for my wire management, of course they come off the back of the winch there get this to focus I ran them along through this gap in the bumper and then up into the inner fender well here I will be using some zip ties to secure them kind of like how I did my uh, reservoir lines here it's just to make sure that they don't get into the tires so from there they come up right there I took out the air box to make routing them a little bit easier they're gonna go under this little inlet right here through the battery box or the battery mount and then up where this empty space is. I'm also going to be installing the battery cutoff switch just so it gives me a little bit of extra security. I don't have to worry about things catching on fire. This is just going to live in this empty space here. Nothing special. So let's get it all wired up and we'll test it out. So when you take the cover off the back of the battery box, you've got these two posts and then you can slide out these parts here. I will probably use my Dremel to make a better hole here, that way I don't ever have to worry about moisture inside the box, but for now, I'm just gonna run it as is. Harbor Freight also includes a few different extra leads, so I'm gonna use this as a uh, for a cutoff of the power. Let me get her put together. I'm gonna take my power wire direct from the winch Put it on the other side. So one thing I don't get is there is a hexagon pattern in there where the nut can sit, but you gotta put the bottom cover on. So what's the point of that? Unless I'm doing something wrong. So on the battery itself, on the power side, there's one open lead. I'm gonna run my power wire straight to that. Just because I want to, I'm also gonna run the sleeve over the ground. because I can.
All right, I see this as a success. So, from the kill switch, power goes direct to the positive wire on the battery. Ground goes from the winch up the fender straight to the negative terminal on the battery as well. So, for most of the time, I will leave this disconnected, but whenever I do intend to use the winch, I just give the switch a flick right there, and now we're powered. Last thing left to do is reattach the fair lead, the hook, and then we're done. Okay, fair leads installed. My other helpful hint is to put a zip tie on the end of your winch cable. That way you can just pull it right through. All right, hook's installed. This nice big apex winch hook. It's just a pin, Nakata pin, super easy stuff. Last thing to do, install my front license plate. All right, now it's just time to check and see if it works. All right, well guys, thanks for watching the channel. If you wanna see more content like this, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope this install was helpful to those of you who are checking out the Apex Winch. I highly recommend it. Uh, granted, I, this is literally the first time I've used it, but if you watch channels like, like I mentioned, Matt's Off-Road Recovery, Cascade Towing Recovery, uh, Fab Rats, all those guys, even Bleepin' Jeep, they all use the Apex Badlands winches. Um, so if those guys are using them all the time, there's no way they can be bad. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see you on the trail.